afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Firstly, thank you very much. I have my special thanks to DEDEX SVC for giving me this opportunity to be amongst you. And this was my dream to come on TEDx. And last year, I had written on my board that one day I will be a TEDx speaker, and today I am a TEDx speaker. Thank you very much. Now, <clears throat> Indian cinema has come a long way from silent movies to Netflix and all Oscar. But one thing which has remained constant is the story of a movie. Although the themes have changed, from social drama, it has come to crime thrillers. But the story which I am going to narrate to you is as relevant today as it was 50 years back. So before I narrate the story, we'll play a small game. And that game is very simple. And why I have taken, uh, chosen this game is because we all love to play games, whether it is outdoor, indoor, or even video games. So when I ask you to close your eyes, Please close your eyes and then I will describe you a child to listen attentively and just visualize that child in your mind when you visit it. So let's start. Please close your eyes. Thank you. There is a child, 7, 8 years old, looking pale, feeble, skinny and physically very weak. Academically, he is very poor. He does not understand a single word of English because he belongs to rural background. He barely passes in the class by getting grace marks. Socially, he is very shy, introvert, with no confidence. He doesn't ask any question in a class, even if he has not understood anything, nor he answers any question even when he knows the answer. Economically, he belongs to low income group, he carries his lunch wrapped in newspaper and wear cotton shorts even in severe winter months of Delhi because he cannot afford to buy a woolen trouser. Now please open your eyes. This is the child and this is the person in front of you. Now I want to ask you how many of you share the same ch uh, childhood like this child. There may be one or two who may be sharing one or two aspects which I have just mentioned. But I don't think there is anyone who has the same childhood as this child. I have served in the army for 35 years. I have attended all the professional courses and done exceedingly well. I have attended the toughest physical course in the world, that is the commando course. And I have commanded one of the finest tank regiments in the Indian Army. After my retirement, I have been helping the students to develop their employability skills so that they get their dream job. In addition to that, I conduct training workshops for students as well as teachers in most of the prestigious school in NCR. And I am very proud and honored to state that the same child who could not open his mouth in the school because of low confidence have conducted training workshop for the very same school for the teachers. I conduct webinar, international webinar on self-improvement skills and I am defense, foreign affairs, an internal security expert on two TV, national TV news channels, NewsX and India News. The aim of telling you all this is not that I want to brag about myself, nor I want to glorify myself. The aim of telling all this is to bring one point home. That is, what life hands you is not important. But what you do with your life, physically and mentally, that is more important. So, now you must be wondering, what was that which transformed that physically weak, academically poor, socially withdrawn child into an outstanding personality? Now let me tell you very candidly, it was a magic moment which gave me a fifth me 
after every challenge, and then it was sheer determination at, and to pursue it unflinchingly. Now you may be wondering, what is a magic moment? Every day, God gives us a moment in which we have the power to change everything that makes us unhappy. That moment may arrive at when we are doing something mundane or thousands and one thing that all seem the same to us. But that moment exists when all the power of the stars become part of us and we, now then we have the power to uh, make miracles. And then you look back with pride and faith at the journey you have undertaken. Now let me also look back at my life and spin the yarn of FFP by quoting few incidents from my life that not only helped me in facing the challenges but also transformed my life dramatically. Ninth class was very, very difficult yet very important to me. Why important? Because that was the time I got a couple of insight and FFP. I joined NCC Junior Way. We were practicing for Independence Day Parade. And out of 85 candidates, 45 were to be selected. Everybody was trying to get selected. But when the final day, when the list came, my name was missing. I went to the instructor and asked him, Ke, sir, mera naam nahi hai. He said, Aapka naam nahi hai because you are apathetic and you don't have any enthusiasm. I was not very clear. I requested him to reconsider my name. He said only on one condition, if you cultivate enthusiasm. I did not understand at that time what is enthusiasm. But I practiced hard and finally got, I got selected. But that thing, that remark of his, left a permanent mark in my mind. And that is the time the first FFD came. That was that whatever you do, do it enthusiastic. Second incident also happened in ninth class. In the beginning of ninth class, unlike what nowadays you have to take PCM in eleventh class, in my time, one has to take the subjects in ninth class itself. So I was forced to take PCM. Well, like I told you, I was not a good student. I did not understand anything about maths and science. As a result, I failed. My father decided to take me out of that school and put me in government school. I prayed it to him. I requested him to let me stay in the same school. But I also requested him to let me change my subject to humanities group. He agreed and then he, with the same request, he went to the principal. And the principal kindly, he was a very kind-hearted person, he agreed. And he also said that in case I clear my ninth class syllabus, and appear in exam after summer vacation and clear the past that, he will promote me to the 10th class. I worked very hard. I not only cleared the exam, I scored very good marks. And that was the turning point, point of my academic life. Finally, in board exam, I got distinction in economics. And distinction in economics in 1971 is different from distinction what we get now. And I got admission <coughs> in economics honors in Ramjas College, not there. <laughs> but that incident gave me another effect. That was do what you love to do, but do it hard. It is not that you keep on doing what you love to do and don't work hard on that. I wanted to join the armed forces from the day one. I appeared in written exam thrice. I failed all the times. So I was dejected, but I said, no, nothing doing. If I cannot put on the army uniform, or I will put on the NCC uniform. I joined NCC, I worked hard, and I took part in the Public Day Parade in 1972 and 73. <laughs> but that burning desire, I'll say burning desire, desire Relax. But that burning desire was still there to become an officer in the army. There, what ma'am also talked about law attraction, 
faith in Almighty and faith in myself. The law of manifestation was, it was the law of attraction was manifested. The policy came that all LCC candidates who clear their C certificate examination need not appear for written exam. And that was the clear go for me. I went to SSB and in first chance itself I got selected and I joined in military, Indian Military Academy. <laughs> Ma'am also mentioned in movie Om Shanti Om there is a famous dialogue which says, Kehte hai, agar kisi cheez ko dil se chaho, to puri kainat usse tumse milane ki koshish me lagda. That was in 1975. That was 32 years earlier than Om Shanti Om. But that law of attraction manifested. And he it gave me another FFE. That was whatever you desire from the bottom of your heart, along with persistence, you will achieve at all cost. Nobody can stop you. Fourth incident was a game changer in my life. I had one year of service. One day I decided to drive a tank because I belong to a tank regiment. And it happened that the brake failed and accidentally the tank hit the wall and the wall came down. The commanding officer was very wild. He gave the orders for my arrest. Now within one of a year of service, I was arrested. And the simple thing what happens in arrest in the army is that your belt is taken away, you are confined to the living quarters, and then you are masked up and given the punishment. So I was very sad, dejected, sitting in one corner. One NCO came, non-commissioned officer, and he said, Saab, dukhi hone se kush nahi hoga zindhi. Aapke saab bain saafi hui hai, isme koji doubt nahi. Agar aapne is bain saafi ka badla lena hai, to aapko isi regiment ke ko ek din command karna. That was what hit me. For next 20 years, I worked hard. I did everything possible to command that regiment. And you'll be very happy to know that after 20 years, I commanded the same regiment where I was arrested. <laughs> the last incident which I wanted to quote is, this incident was led me to my second innings. I was on steady leave and I was doing boy A-level software program course. And my classmates were young college students like you all. They were highly educated. They were technically very literate. But there was one thing which was missing. And that one thing was, because by that time I had a lot of experience in the army also, that were the basic skills which are required to make you employable. A serious thought came to my mind that I had enough of army life now or let me hang my uniform and do something for the student community. Because this, these are the people who invest about 18 years, 20 years of their life studying, studying, studying. And their parents invest their hard and money on them. And finally, if they don't get their dream job, I think there is total injustice to them. So I devoted my life for making the students employable. And in doing that, I found my true purpose in life. Audrey Hepburn, Audrey Hepburn, a British actress and a humanitarian, has aptly said that as you grow older, you realize you have two hands. One for looking after yourself and other for looking after others. I followed that and as of now, I am following my true purpose by making students employable and helping them to carve their destiny. Now, I just want to summarize the FFNEs on what these FFNEs did to me. First thing they did to me was that they transformed a below average child into an outstanding individual. Secondly, they keep me young. I believe that youth is not time of life, the state of mind. Number three, it gives me endless energy. I, I am 69 years old, but I want to fly. I want to play big as a now also. <laughs> Number four, very, very important, 
it acted, these epiphanies, they acted as a spiritual magnet which attracted a lot of inspirational and motivational angels in my life. It helped me in manifesting the law of attraction. And lastly, it gave me a beautiful song to sing. And that song is to give an inspiring message to you all that yes, you can do it. It is possible. You will do it. Now let me summarize these epiphanies for the benefit of you all. So that in out of those five, even if you follow two, three, I think that will change your life. First, whatever you do, do it enthusiastically. Nowadays, there is a, something in uh, fashion that is cool. You ask anyone, how are you? He says, I'm cool. <laughs> Don't be cool. Truth is not supposed to be cool. You should be warm, you should be hot. <laughs> right? Number two, do what you love to. And what these epiphanies I'm telling you are all action oriented. These are not simply desire. Number two is, do what you love to do, but do it hard. Number three, whatever you desire from the bottom of your heart, along with your persistence, that is more important because desiring is a different thing. Along with your persistence, you will achieve at all cost. Fourthly, every adversity has seed of opportunity, but you have to look for it and then work on it. And lastly, do something for others because that is the main reason why you have been born as a human being. <laughs> Lastly, I want to mention three mantras beside these five FFPs which I have talked about. First is that <clears throat> at any moment in your life, you have the power to say that this is not how my life is going to end. Number two, we all come into this world with lessons to learn and gift to give. These lessons I have learned and I am giving you gift. And lastly, very, very important, it is not over till you win. Thank you very much. It was lovely and fascinating.